again. Thanks for tuning into the third part of our discussion on the practicalities and benefits of working with alternative legal service providers. I'm John Townend, Head of Legal Services at Conexo, and I was recently joined by Vanya Bromfield from Smith's Group, Chris Dye from Johnson Controls, Anna Lawrence from Elementis Global, and Kate Newbound from HSBC to talk about current trends. In parts one and two, we talked about the use of ALSPs and change management, and we'll now move on to discuss some of the benefits of using alternative providers, in particular, the use of legal front doors. You, you mentioned a couple of benefits, Chris, and, and Kate, I'd be very interested in, in your view on this as well, because it's been established for so long um, at HSBC. What, what are the benefits that you typically talk about when you think of ALSPs, or if you're having those sort of difficult change management conversations with the business? We we talk a lot about right work, right place, um, which I think goes to the point that Anna was making about keeping our in-house legal team focused on the most important strategic things for the group rather than dealing with NDAs or anything that's kind of lower complexity. So um, the benefits for us is it allows us to have more time for ourselves. I think we've talked about this um, more time for the for our in-house team to focus on things that are juicy and interesting and help develop them but also they can really add some value to um i think that's that's one of the things we talk a lot about is are we really adding any value here or could someone else do it um yeah. and i think if someone else can do it because we're not really adding any value like our relationships with business or understanding of all the complexities of hsbc you don't really need that to do a straightforward SAS subscription license. Um, you don't you don't need that for an NDA um, or professional services consultancy, that type of work. So we have, I mean, we've moved our triage line probably five or six times since we started outsourcing, just generally kind of thinking, actually, we still have we still have work that the in-house team are doing that we're like, that doesn't need us, that doesn't need us to do that work. Um, and what we'd like to do long term is our plan is that we don't outsource anything at the top end as much to kind of external law firms. So at the moment, we have a model where we have outsource providers doing kind of our medium to low risk. I'd say I wouldn't describe it all as low risk. I think that we've got some things in there that are kind of slightly riskier than our in-house team do the vast majority of everything else. And then we use kind of external law firms for the real top end of the deals, we'd like to stop that bit. Yeah. That's our goal. Yeah. Because um, also, you know, that, yeah. that's the bit that costs us the most money. And um, so just even from a pure financial perspective, that makes commercial sense for us. But that, that's quite a sophisticated, so I, I built up over time, obviously, that's quite a sophisticated categorization of each different type of work and the optimal way to, to get it delivered, bearing in mind those commercial factors, the skills and the experience within your team, uh, the business pressures around each. And then, as you say, you've been able to adjust it over time and, and drive different requests down different routes based yeah. on that changing categorization. Has, has anybody else approached anything at that level yet? Or do you think that's probably still to come? I think we're, we're using that, at, you know, I certainly use that certainly for the sort of BIS work that comes in. I have more of a, albeit slightly more manual way at the moment, but consistent um, sort of form that comes in with the work request. So we sort of triage and, you know, can make a decision on that point. Um, I I think looking forward, I'd like to see, you know, like this is a huge amount, Kate, in, um, and thinking about then where the, the sort of role of you, your um, alternative legal service provider sort of fits in around I think that triaging step becomes absolutely critical because I think it's at that point um, and it sort of determines as well the, the comfort levels around triaging so I think as a um, first step for us there's probably more of a tendency to want to be able to triage um, and keep more of a, an arm around things that are coming in and make more of a decision point around things when go out. Um, I would imagine that um, as we get sort of more along the maturity curve that um, will be a bit more, I would say, automated pushing out of certain work as it's been um, uh, triaged. But I think we're, we're definitely still on a journey towards that at the moment. We still haven't, um, we still haven't automated our triage, which is one of my. What, what I feel like it's a, it's a failing because we've been doing triage, and um, our outside outsource provider have done triage for us for probably five years, but because of the quality of the instructions we still have so much kind of manual engagement with that process in terms of 
What do you actually mean? What is that you actually want? Is it really an outsourcing? Is it actually business critical? That kind of thing. So um, it's still like, like my goal would be that it can be automated and we're more automated than we've ever been. We're, we're more kind of, um, you know, it, it, it's more straightforward than it's ever been. We have one simple form, supposedly simple, um, that people have to fill in. And then depending on what the answer, that's which kind of team it goes to. Um, but I'd, I'd love to automate it. But I don't know what anyone else feels about the quality of the instructions. Yeah. Um, it's always our challenge. I, you know, like for me, it's particularly things around um, compliance and, you know, data protection piece is always for me a particular hot potato where I think it's, um, you know, you can either end up with a, a huge amount of work that you're doing because of a sort of misunderstanding around what data has been processed or you sort of potentially, which is obviously a worse situation than sort of don't put um, the, the right documentation in place. So, you know, I agree with you, Kate, that I think there's an awful, you know, the, the, there's an awful amount of uh, like merit at the moment and, and it's sort of a, a bit of a catch-all, isn't it, it's just to make sure that um, you're not sort of inadvertently sending things out to the wrong place with that triaging process. 